number one Iron Age booty daddy. As I have spent a good chunk of the last year covering the Iron Age, this tag that got attached to a movement of creative people going out there and creating new fantastic projects spanning all of entertainment that from animation to tabletop RPG and just about everything in between, I have noticed something. A lot of the projects that are becoming more and more well known and more and more attached to this Iron Age as we call it are getting a little bit spicy. And if you guys saw the thumbnail of this video, I have a very important question to ask. Will comics that are verging into lewd territory and projects like that that are being more well known and more well, I guess, in front of everything else, be enough to keep the Iron Age alive, the philosophy alive that is going along with this? Or do we need some more all ages books out there and all ages creations to make sure that what we're going for and the things that we want to promote carry on into the future? Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this channel, if you like what I'm doing here, if you like this conversation, it would mean so much to me. If you guys would like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. So without any further ado, let's get into this. Earlier today, I made a post on Twitter, and honestly, it kind of blew up for my Twitter size. Keep in mind, I'm a very, very small channel, and I'm even smaller over there on Twitter. About 500 people follow me, which is unbelievably incredible. For I didn't think I would be there this last year. But one of the questions that I asked was the one that I just posed to you. With all of these creations coming out that are very scantily clad and even getting into the lewd territory, is that something that can sustain this idea of creativity, this thing that we all want to do, which is basically take back entertainment and make sure that entertainment is good again? Well, as a father of four, one of the things that I constantly said on this channel, give me something to put in the hands of my children. But the other side of that coin is I want to be able to read it and enjoy it as well. So when I say all ages, I'm not saying children's books. And the funny thing is, is a lot of people on that Twitter thread, although it was a very good discussion, there was no hostility at all, which was very weird for Twitter. But on that thread, when a lot of people said, oh, well, children's books this, well, children don't have money, so you have to advertise to those people who do have money, and so on and so forth. And although those are very valid points, I have a wallet myself, right? And I happen to want to make sure that the things that I have in my house are not only good for me to read and fun for me to read and engaging for me to read, but things that I can give to my children as well. That doesn't mean they need to be childish. So let's walk through some of the thought processes that I had today and some of the conversations. Obviously, the first one being that, well, things that are geared more towards children aren't exactly intellectually stimulating. But again, I never said for children. I said all ages. My instant rebuttal to the all ages argument in that regard is Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, I would argue, for anybody who can just r read that much, which, I mean, if you have the collection, I have a collection of the Lord of the Rings. It's this thick. It's massive. But for anybody who reads that, that's an all ages book. That can take everybody who is capable of understanding Tolkien. And I know there are some kids out there that are really, really, really young who can understand Tolkien and what he was writing in The Lord of the Rings. And it can take us all on an adventure. Not only can it take us all on an adventure, but so much so that books like that, it was like the number one book of the last century. Okay, It sold more copies than any other book out there back in the 1900s and the early 2000s. The only one to beat it was the Bible itself. How about another project or out there that some of us may know, and I don't mention this very much on my channel because it's dead and gone and we should just, you know, leave it where it lies and pay homage to it when we can, but Star Wars. Star Wars was one of those stories. Now, that's a visual medium, but there were a lot of books that came out with Star Wars that were tied into the universe that I would argue were all ages. Star Trek was an all ages thing. Families would gather around the TV and watch Star Trek. Now, I'm not a Trekkie myself and never really could get into it. I thought about giving it a chance as an adult, but ultimately, I have other projects that I'm looking into. 
So this is my argument for that, that the things that are geared towards all ages aren't exactly enough to, well, entice the adult reader. I take exception to that because we've seen it throughout history, that good stories that are written in a mature language, and by mature language, I don't mean Tego Biddies. I mean a language that is well-rounded, concise, to the point, using a vernacular that is obviously meant for uh, older adults. I mean, I think the average, what is it, the average reading proficiency in the U.S. is about a fourth grade level. So maybe we could step that up a little bit to a seventh grade level in our writing and still be able to have adults and children enjoy alike. Now, the other side of this, too, is people say, well, but the Iron Age, it's a creative movie. You can't stifle creativity. I wasn't asking to stifle creativity in my post at all. Um, and actually, a lot of the projects that I've covered here on the channel, on my Wednesday stream, I call it Comic Shop Wednesdays, where I shout out a bunch of uh, creators who drop their projects in my Twitter thread that I do every Wednesday. But I've seen a bunch of projects that have very, very scantily clad women, scantily clad men, and some projects that have even verged into the lewd, as I say, but with those projects being out there, I feel as though, and those projects are very much getting pushed to the forefront right now, I don't want them to go away, but I do say to this, what can I bring into the house that I could leave on the coffee table in case mom and grandma come over for coffee, right? Or that I'm not worried about my kids seeing because they are still younger, right? Although they're fun for me to read, the artwork is absolutely brilliant and fantastic, and the creators who I've talked to are fun, engaging, and driven individuals, there is the question that I ask, are images like that and are books like that? I have some books over here that they deal in more mm, sensually graphic language as well as a lot more adult language with, you know, using curse words and things like that. Um, I'm no stranger to curse words. Tune into my live streams. You'll hear me cuss a lot, guys. I'm a construction worker. But is that enough to sustain this movement? Now, this mo I keep saying this movement. It's not just Iron Age. Let's contextualize Iron Age for just a quick second here. Again, it is a bunch of people who decided that the mainstream had let them down and let them down severely. Okay? They have taken everything that made things great over the last hundred years that basically took Superman from a comic in the 1930s to one of the most prolific American heroes that we have ever seen, and they have readily, they have readily undone all of that in the last 10 years. But things like that, how do we start there? Well, back in the day, comics were very different. You had detective comics, you had noir comics, you had superhero comics. That was a new concept back in the 1930s and 40s and various other different forms of medium. In fact, one of the most popular things in, in, in one of the most popular and well known uh, in its country forms of comic books is Bande dessinée out in France. They in fact have comics that span not just the superhero genre, but all over the place, right? And children and adults can enjoy a variety of different stories uh, from the same books. And it's not necessarily geared towards adults or children. I think there's a divide here in the American mentality that we here in America tend to treat children as stupid. Now, as a father of four, I don't treat my children as stupid. My children are just ignorant to a lot of the things going on in the world. And it's my job as a father to raise them. But it's also my job as a father to make sure that the things that I have, the things that I understand, I can give to them as well. Okay. The other thing that I heard today was that, well, if you get rid of all of the scantily clad men and women, which worked for the last 60 years, you know, that's what killed comics. Well, and what killed modern day storytelling. Mm, I disagree. I think it was one, the bad storytelling. Two, uh, not that they necessarily got rid of the scantily clad men and women, but that they tried to redefine the standards of what a barbarian looks like or what you know a superhero looks like and tried to have some 450 pound land whale uh, on screen and tell us that that 450 pound land whale can fight just as good as a inf as a fit athlete, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words a little bit here. Again, there's more to the story than that. Now, 
one of the one of the other things that was brought up was well comic what sells you know sexy women in spandex suits I, I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I also wouldn't say that, you know, sexy women, and that's different than sexual women. Let's get that right. There's a difference between sexy and sexual, right? But I would say that the spandex suits, I personally have no issue with, and I don't want to see go away. But when the, sta but when the spandex suits are turning into some of the comics that I've seen and some of the things that you can unlock by purchasing higher tiers in some of these crowdfund campaigns where it's not really a suit anymore, and the artwork that you're getting and being promoted is basically a string bikini that's covering up just enough. And you start to wonder, hmm, do we really need, will this creative movement thrive on just that? Will the creative movement where we have books, where we open them up and it's constantly using curse words and it's constantly using sexual language and it's constantly using language that definitely shouldn't be in front of children, will that be enough to last a lifetime and not just a lifetime, but multiple lifetimes, multiple generations? All of this is stuff that I constantly think about. And again, I'm not asking any creator out there to stop doing what they're doing. I'm simply asking, as a movement, what are we looking for? Constantly, we're told that we're in a culture war, and especially if you're in the Iron Age and you know what I'm talking about, you know that we're in a culture war. You know the things that they are putting in front of kids right now, which I won't mention, but you can see it in the news media a lot. You can see what the schools are pumping out and putting in front of kids, what libraries are putting in front of kids, and overall, just the disturbing imagery that's getting out there and being put in front of children. Now, I wouldn't put that disturbing imagery out there in front of children, and although the imagery that I'm talking about is not as bad as that, it still gets pretty close. Again, not to say that having more of the lewd comic books and having more of the the, the bubbles that are placed in front of the you know a, a, a woman's body is a bad thing, but it's not necessarily something that I can put in front of my kids. Now, to wrap up this final thought, because this video has gone on just a little bit longer than I normally do, to wrap up my final thought here, out of all of the authors and artists that I've talked to, and I've talked to many of them. Heck, we're doing episode 38 tonight of Iron Age Nights. It's on every Friday, so if you guys are interested in meeting new authors, new creators from all over the spectrum, not just comic books and graphic novels, but music as well as tabletop RPGs and things like that, you should tune in. My question to this is, when you were a kid, what inspired you to get into comics? What got you excited about Superman, Batman, Luke Skywalker? When did you get into that? Most of the people that I talked to knew from a young age that's what they wanted to do. Keyword there being a young age. And I know that my children and my grandchildren need to be exposed to things that can inspire them. So my question is this. If we're not putting things out in the forefront, if you aren't putting things out in the forefront that inspire the little generation, do you trust the person that is putting things out that's going to inspire them? But ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about this topic, and I make sure to read all of them on a live stream that I do every single Sunday. It's called Sunday Coffee. Make sure to read all the comments because I feel if you guys are going to dedicate time to me, I can dedicate time right back to you. So leave a comment down below and then tune in on Sundays and hear my thoughts on it. Get my live reaction to it. I try not to read them before Sunday. Sometimes I cheat a little bit, though, because they're interesting. But thank you all so much for being here on A Drink With Crazy. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. And I would ask, beg, borrow, and steal just to get you guys to click the links down in the description below to join my Gilded server and my drinkwithcrazy.locals.com. Oh, and by the way, just in case you guys didn't know, I'm also over on Rumble as well. So click that link while you're down there. See you next time.